Good morning, students. How was your weekend? I hope it's fine. Today, we'll be looking at balanced diet and the mode of nutrition. Now, before we start the class, I believe we are all ready with our writing materials, pencil, biro, and paper. There we go now. By the end of this class, what we are expected to know are the following. We should be able to define balanced diet, list the composition of a balanced diet, list the mode of nutrition, that is autotrophic for plants, heterotrophic for non-green plants and other animals. We should all be able to describe the mode of nutrition given examples. Now, what do we call balanced diet? Balanced diet is that meal that consists of all essential nutrients required for body growth. Having defined balanced diet, what are the importance of balanced diet? Balanced diet makes us healthy. That is, it makes us resistant to disease. It encourages growth and normal body development. It provides energy needed for body metabolic activities, such as respiration, digestion. Balanced diet also prevents malnutrition deficiency. What are the modes of nutrition in organisms? One of the modes of nutrition in organisms is autotrophic. Autotrophic nutrition is that type of nutrition employed by green plants by a process called photosynthesis. What do we call photosynthesis? Process by which green plants manufacture their food by making use of inorganic raw materials usually carbon dioxide and water, in the presence of light and chlorophyll to give us that carbohydrate and liberation of oxygen. Now, autotrophic has two modes, photosynthesis, chemosynthesis. Then the second mode of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition. Heterotrophic is carried out by non-green plants and animals that depend on plants for their food. Green plants are autotrophs. Auto means they do it themselves. Why are they auto? Because they can manufacture their food through the process called photosynthesis. They are primary producers in the ecosystem. Definition. Auto photosynthesis is otherwise known as holophytic nutrition. It is the process by which organism green plants manufacture food using light energy, carbon dioxide and water in the presence of light and chlorophyll. The process we say is called photosynthesis. An example of photosynthetic organisms, we have blue green bacteria and all green plants. Mechanism of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis has two mechanisms or two phases or stages. We have the light stage or light phase or light dependent stage. We have the dark stage or phase or light independent stage. Now, when we talk about the light stage of photosynthesis, it means it occurs, the process occurs in the presence of light. It occurs in the presence of light. And chlorophyll or chloroplast must be present. That means that plant that is photosynthesizing must be a green plant. Now, what is the function of the chlorophyll when we talk about the light stage of photosynthesis? 
The chlorophyll is used to trap the light energy. Now the diagram we are looking at there shows the what? Shows the light stage of photosynthesis and it is called Calvin cycle. You can see the chloroplast there. You can see the equation for photosynthesis here to give us simple carbohydrate. This one is simple carbohydrate. Then where energy is used, that is the sunlight energy. Now the light stage also, the trapped light energy, that is the light is used to split water molecule into its ion. Split, to split water molecules into its ion. What are the ions? The hydrogen ion and the hydroxyl ion. Now this means that the water, one of the inorganic raw materials, that is required for photosynthesis is broken down into its components. The components are hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. The hydrogen ion is designated H positive and the hydroxyl ion OH negative. The life stage reaction is not enzymatic. How do we mean? That is, it does not require enzymes. It does not require enzymes. The fact that it occurs in the presence of light, the process by which that water is splitted is called photolysis. It's called what? Photolysis. The equation for photolysis, that is the splitting of water into its ion is this. The hydroxyl ion is broken down to hydrogen and the OH. That is four molecules of OH ion. Is broken down to give us hydrogen ion and the OH ion. The OH is further broken down or reconverted to form water and oxygen as byproduct, as you can see here. Now, this is the OH negative reconverted to give us water and oxygen. Now, if we are asked, the oxygen given out during photosynthesis is obtained from what? It's obtained from water because it is the water that is splitted into the hydrogen ion and the OH before the OH is now reconverted to give us the, hydro the oxygen. The dark stage of photosynthesis can be described as a reduction of carbon dioxide molecule. That is, carbon dioxide is reduced. It is called dioxide because it occurs in the absence of light. And it depends on the light stage reaction. That means the dark stage cannot occur without the light stage. What makes the leaf photosynthesize? That is, the features of the leaf for photosynthesis. What are those things present in the leaf that makes it to photosynthesize. One, the stomata that permits the diffusion of gases in and out of the leaf. We, shall, we are going to see the diagram of the leaf showing the stomata. The palisade cell, that is the palisade cell, it contains chloroplasts where photosynthetic takes place, photosynthesis takes place. Without the palisade cell, photosynthesis cannot occur. The mesophyll, spongy mesophyll, contains air space, which permits the diffusion of carbon dioxide to the chloroplast. The guard cell is present in the stoma or around the stomata. The guard cell controls the opening and closing of the stomata. Closing and opening and closing of the stomata, as we know, will occur during the day and night. That permit leads to transpiration. Now, here we here is the structure of the internal structure of the leaf. We can see the upper epidermis. We can see the palisade. Those dotted patches, those dotted patches there in the palisade cell are the chloroplasts. They are the chloroplasts. They make photosynthesis take place. After the upper epidermis, we have the mesophyll. The mesophyll takes place from the palisade portion up to the stoma. 
You can also see inside the mesophyll, we have the spongy mesophyll, also containing chloroplast, and air space. Here is the stoma. That is the stoma. It controls the opening and closing of the stomata for diffusion. Then we have the lower epidermis and the waxy cortical. Now, at this point, every one of us who have to learn how to draw and label this structure very, very well. Now, during photosynthesis, the aim of photosynthesis is to produce glucose or carbohydrate by making use of carbon dioxide and water in the presence of light. Now, the importance of this carbohydrate or glucose produced during photosynthesis are one, some glucose formed are used by the plant. The excess glucose that is produced is converted to substances like sucrose, starch, and oil, which are stored in various parts of the plant. The plants, that is the photosynthetic plants, are consumed by animals. These animals are the heterotrophs. They are the heterotrophs. They depend on pl uh, uh, plants for their food. Then excess glucose is stored as glycogen and fats in animals. I'll take that again. Importance of glucose during photosynthesis. Glucose from are produced by plants. Excess glucose is converted to sucrose, starch, and oil. The plants are consumed by animals. Excess glucose is stored as glycogen and fat in animals. Before photosynthesis will take place, some factors must be responsible. If any of these factors is not present, then photosynthesis will not occur. So the following factors must be present, must be constant for photosynthesis to take place. Water, light, carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide, chlorophyll, enzymes, and mineral salt. All of them must be present. Similarities, photosynthesis and respiration, they are both metabolic activities. They take place in organisms. Do they have anything in common? Yes. These are some of the things they have in common. Both photosynthesis and respiration convert energy from one form to another. They both require mechanism for exchange of gases. They both require special organelles, such as mitochondria in the case of respiration, and chloroplast in the case of photosynthesis. They both carry electrons, NAD, nicotamine dinucleotide. They both, both process expand energy in form of ATP. ATP, they both produce energy in form of ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. Having I mean, looked at the similarities between the two metabolic activities, we want to check the differences between the two, photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis is a building up process that is anabolic. Why is something is anabolic? It means it builds. It builds. Why respiration is a catabolic process, a breaking down process. What was built during the photosynthesis is being broken down during respiration. Two, energy in form of heat is absorbed and stored. In the case of photosynthesis, in the case of respiration, energy is released. Energy is released. Number three, carbon dioxide is absorbed and used up during photosynthesis. Oxygen is absorbed and used up during respiration. Water is used during photosynthesis. Water is liberated during respiration. Photosynthesis occur in chloroplast only. Respiration occurs in the mitochondria. 
All other green plants can photosynthesize, while respiration takes place in all living organisms. Now, the next is chemosynthetic nutrition. That is the second mode of autotrophic nutrition. We call it chemosynthesis. It takes place by green plants. But in this case, they don't use the solar energy. The energy used by photosynthetic bacteria are obtained from chemical substance. So it is carried out by certain bacteria that are autotroph. They are capable of producing materials. They are capable of producing, manufacturing their food and manufacturing their food. Photosynthetic bacteria make use of inorganic substance, such as carbon dioxide, water, and hydrogen sulfide. The energy used by photosynthetic bacteria, so photosynthetic organism, is obtained from chemical reaction. That is, they depend not on sunlight for their energy. It is only photosynthetic bacteria that uses sunlight energy. But chemosynthetic, they don't depend on sunlight for their source of energy. Take note of that. That would be some of the differences between chemosynthesis and food and photosynthesis. Examples of photosynthetic bacteria. We have sulfur bacteria present in the soil. Sulfur bacteria present in the soil. Nitrifying bacteria, sometimes called nitrosominous and nitrobacter, is also a chemosynthetic bacteria present in the soil. The energy produced is used in combining water and carbon dioxide to form sugar. That means they also produce what? Sugar. Chemosynthetic bacteria also produce sugar. Now, let us look at the board once again. The differences between the two processes, you are supposed to know them. And after that, you should be able to write the equation for the light and dark stage of photosynthesis. The equation for light and dark stage of photosynthesis. The equation for photolysis, you should be able to do that. Our assignment for this class is that, number one, explain the term autotrophic nutrition. Explain the term autotrophic nutrition. I didn't say define, explain autotrophic nutrition. Number two, distinguish between photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. Distinguish between photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. Sentences. I'll take it again. Assignment. Explain the term autotrophic nutrition. Number two, distinguish between photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. You are advised to read further on this topic. So I've given you some textbooks for you to read. One of them is Fundamental Biology by M. V. Roberts. Fundamental Biology by M. V. Roberts. Number two, Essential Biology by M. Michael. Essential Biology by M. Michael. Any question? Before we go, no question. Thank you.